Larrabee. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. I said, Eddie, what's the cavalry going to do to win glory today, Sergeant? I'm glad you spoke up, Suthy. You and Private Plover there have just volunteered to make mud bricks for the new powder magazine building. Oh, Sergeant. No, no, Sergeant. Me and Plover worked in that adobe all day yesterday. Uh, another month, you ought to be finished. I didn't join this army to make mud bricks. You refusing an order, Suthy? Put your shoes on, Plover. Let's get going. Now, the rest of you men will finish cleaning this barracks and fall out in ten minutes. I suppose you're taking them buffalo hunting, Each Sergeant. man will go to supply and get a pick or a shovel. We're building road today. Building a road. That's enough. I said ten minutes. You line up smiling and happy or I'll work you all night. You got your shoes on, Plover? Well, sure. What do I need shoes for? I'll be on my hands and knees most of the time. Ain't it a shame, men like us doing that kind of work? Yeah. I'm ready, Suthy. Then let's go. Ten minutes, soldiers, and don't forget them shovels. <laughs> no, I reckon any outfit's got to do some time in garrison, Suthy. We've been in garrison three months. Got me talking to myself. Well, leastwise, we ain't getting shot at by no wild Indians. What's the cavalry fur if it ain't to get shot at and to do a little shooting itself? All the Indians around here is peaceable. Leastwise, there has been the last few months. <laughs> Reservation Indians. Them shine ought to be ashamed of themselves. Sitting around watching the women do the work, waiting to be fed by the government. Where's the gumption, anyway? Well... Good thing they is peaceable, I think. Them engines go on a tear makes it bad for everybody. They go on a tear to get us out of the garrison. Well, they ain't going, so you just might as well face up to it. I could make them go, Clover. Oh, now, stop that talk. I told you how I could make them go. Now, look here, Suthy. I ain't even going to listen to you. Why, you could be shot for just what you're thinking. Nobody'd ever know. You know you're crazy. Being stuck here in a fort so long has driven you plumb crazy. Your mouth's getting awful big, Clover. Oh, now, don't get on the prod. Look here, I'll tell you what. Tonight, you and me are going to sneak off the post, and we'll go into town and have us a drink of that gal you like. <laughs> that Ella Braden. <laughs> How about that, Sid? Never you mind, Ella Braden. You called me crazy. Oh, I didn't mean nothing by I it. ain't crazy, and I'll prove it to you. You put that knife away, Suthy. You got a knife? Get it out. No. Get it out, I said. I'm gonna cut you, Plover. I'll do it. All right, that's how you want it. Now, there's my knife. Now, you cut me, Suthy. Come on, now, cut me. I'll lay your whole face open, don't you? Hold it, you man. Lieutenant Cybert, you don't mean nothing to me. Jack quits with him, Suthy. Watch your face! Oh, rip your belly open, you try that again! Stop that, man. Put those knives away. It's a fair fight. You got no right to stop Do me. as I say, Suthy. You cut me, I'll put mine away. I can't quit less than he does. All right, Suthy. You too, Plover. I know you're on edge being in garrison so long, but that's part of soldiering. And so is keeping your temper. Now put those knives away before we all get in trouble. Oh. There's mine. All right, you here to Captain Suthy. There's mine. You men on detail? Making mud pies again, Captain. Then get to it. If there's any more fighting, you'll go to the guardhouse. That clear? Yes, sir. Move yes, out. Sir. 
Those men are crazy enough to have stuck you, Captain, getting between them that way. One of them might have stuck me, Mr. Seibert's, not both of them. They need action, Captain. They're soldiers, not laborers. And yeah, they're even forgetting to think like soldiers. There's going to be more trouble like this, Mr. Seibert's. A lot more. <laughs> Captain Quince reporting, sir. At ease, Captain. Well, how's B Company getting along? Well, Major Daggett, I guess B Company's getting along about the way you'd expect. Like those two men of yours last week who were going at each other with knives? I didn't know you'd heard about that, Major. I heard about it. I also heard how you failed to punish them. With all due respect, sir, it's my company. And you know I never interfere on a company level. I'd transfer out of here if you did. Well, I'm sure you would. Uh, it isn't easy, is it, Lee? <laughs> uh, much more of this. I'll be looking for a good fight myself. Enforced inactivity. The bane of the cavalry. That and the salt pork diet. Two more of my men came down with scurvy today, Major. That's what I wanted to see you about, Lee. Oh? How'd you like to go on a buffalo hunt? Buffalo hunt? I thought we couldn't yeah, go I know, I know. General orders are to avoid antagonizing the Indians by hunting buffalo in their territory. We're sitting right in the middle of their territory. Twenty-two cases of scurvy are enough. Higher orders are to hold Fort Laramie with a full complement of cavalry. Captain Quince, you think you can bring in some fresh meat without starting a new Indian war? I can try, sir. I'm dependent on you. Yes, sir. You'll take 15 men, two wagons, and six mules. You'll leave one half hour after Reveille tomorrow morning. You'll return Saturday by sundown without fail, exactly one week from today. Any questions? No, sir. Now, I hope you'll see fit to include those two men, Suthi and Plover, in your party. I intend to, sir, as Skinners. <laughs> and move out. Suthi, how you feel? Not so good, Plover. I'm bleeding again. Or well, most to the fort. Here, see the man? They're standing around waiting on us. That's what the captain said. Saturday by sundown, we made it. Yeah, some of us made it. Eight of us? Eight out of fifteen. Seven men killed. We done all right. Yeah, uh, that's so. Hey, looky, there's Major Daggett. He's waiting, too, you see him? No. I can't see so good, Clover. My head hurts bad. Everything's kind of swimmy. You ain't gonna pass out now, are you? The way you got me roped onto this saddle wouldn't matter none if I did pass out. Well, these other boys hurt worse than you. I ain't complaining. Vince up ahead there, he passed out. Got him tied belly down across his saddle. Then I reckon he's dead. We're here, Suthi. We're back. I can't see nothing but the fort. Oh, my head hurts awful. Control, halt! Corporal Mercer, you'll remain with the wounded. They'll stay mounted. Sergeant Gorse, get a detail from the garrison to help these men down get them to the hospital. Yes, sir. Rest of you stable the horses. Control dismissed. Uh, Mr. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. Would you take my horse to the stable for me? Certainly, Captain. I'd better report to the Major there. Yes, sir. If you'd care to, uh, come by my quarters later. I'll, I'll find us a drink. Thank you, sir. Captain Quince reporting, sir. You're not hurt, Lee. No, sir. Good. What happened? Cheyenne, over a hundred braves hit us dawn two days ago. I had a guard posted, but they rode right over him. Seven troopers killed in battle. Another died in his saddle about noon today. Wagons, mules lost. I sent a scout looking for you. He never found us. What is it, Major? Cheyenne jumped the reservation? Yeah. And nobody knows why. They slipped out in the middle of the night and disappeared. I can't figure it. Big Wolf's been as peaceful a chief as I've known. 
Big Wolf's young son died a couple of weeks ago. Maybe that got him started. I think... I think I'll ride out to the reservation tomorrow. Take a look around. What for? No particular reason, Major. Just curious. Captain, I don't think them Cheyenne left a single thing out here. Yeah, they sure stripped the place, Gorse. I guess when you ain't got much, you don't leave nothing behind at all. Oh. Got all them poles over there with the burying platforms on them. Uh, what about them? They're all new, Captain. I mean, they're empty. There's no corpses laying on them. Can't be new. They must have taken their dead with them, Sergeant. I don't understand it. That ain't like them. Why would they do that? They, they were in quite a hurry. What do you mean? Look at that grave over there. It's half torn down. Yeah. Kind of spooky out here, ain't it? Yeah. Well, we'll stop in town on the way back, Sergeant. Now you're making this detail worthwhile, Captain. Yeah, I got some business at the post office. Post office? But I'll meet you at the saloon when I'm through. I'll be there, Captain. You can depend on me. much money, but well, soldiering's an honorable profession. It's better than being a thief, ain't it? I, uh, I hope I'm not intruding, Sergeant Gorse. Captain? Uh, Captain Quince, this here's Ella Braden. How do you do, Ella? Pleased to meet you, Captain. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks. I've been trying to explain to Ella that soldiers are just as good as civilians. I never said they weren't, Sergeant. Sergeant Gorse has been in the cavalry 20 years, Ella. He's still trying to figure out why. <laughs> I think you're right, Captain. It's all he talks about. Now, that ain't so. I mean, when you're being a gentleman, Sergeant. Oh. <laughs> you know what he did a couple of weeks ago, Captain? Now, Ella. What'd he do, Ella? Well, he... <laughs> nah... Now, I'm too much of a lady to say it. Thank goodness for that, anyway. Ella, if Gorse gets out of line, just you whack him with a bottle. It's the only kind of language he understands sometimes. Oh, I got something better to whack him with, Captain. It's carved from solid bone. What? Yeah, I got it in this sack. Brought it in to show to the barkeep. Now, what in the world is that, Ella? Let me see that. It's an Indian souvenir of some kind. Where'd you get this, Ella? A kid at the fort gave it to me. He found it somewhere, I guess. Who gave it to you? His name is Suthi. Suthi. Well, what's wrong, Captain? This is a Cheyenne totem, Ella. I'm uh, going to have to keep it. Oh, here, now that's mine. You give it back. Sorry, Ella. You'll have to find another souvenir. This one's caused enough trouble. <laughs> Morning, Captain Quince. Lieutenant Mather, I want to see Private Suthi. Where's his bed? Uh, at the far end, Captain. There, where Sergeant Gorse is. Thank you. Captain? Gorse? Hello, Suthi. Oh, Captain Quince. How are you, sir? How are you feeling, Suthi? Oh, pretty good, Captain. Except for my head aching all the time. You'll get over it. I better. I can't stand it this way, sir. I wish they'd killed me if I got to go on like this. Suthi, you seen this before? I don't know, Captain. What is it? You know what it is. Where'd you get it? I can't help you, Captain. I'm sorry. Maybe later sometime. Now, look here, Suthi. You know I won't take an answer like Captain that. Captain Quince. What is it, Sergeant? Step over here a minute, sir. All right. What do you want? Oh, my oh, head. I wish you'd stop, stop aching. Oh. oh, I see. Oh. All right, Sergeant. Aches all the time. Well, Suthi, I won't bother you anymore. I know all I need to anyway. I don't know what you're talking about, Captain. 
I ought to hate you, Susie. But I only feel sorry for you. What you've done, I'm going to try to set right. But whether I can or not, you're going to have to live with it the rest of your life. I think I'm speaking for a lot of good men who died because of you. Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'll meet you at the main gate in half an hour. Have our horses saddled and packed with two days' rations. Move out. I find this hard to believe, Captain. Major Daggett, I... I've always tried to think of every trooper in my company as a real soldier. Somehow it makes me feel less of one myself when I find out about a man like Private Suthi. I can understand that, Captain Quince. I sympathize with you. Yes, sir. But what you propose to about it is nothing short of suicide. I can't allow that. I'm meeting Sergeant Gorse at the main gate a few minutes, Major. I'm volunteering for this mission. If he goes with me, he'll have to volunteer, too. Big Wolf and Cheyenne are a mission for the entire 2nd Cavalry, Captain. Not for two men only. It was me, those Cheyenne warriors, Major. It was my men I watched die. This mission belongs to B Company. To me. Not to the 2nd Cavalry. You're putting a terrible responsibility on me, Captain Quince. As a volunteer? I don't see how, Major. All right, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Oh, Lee. Yes, sir? I'll give you one order. You're to return to Fort Laramie within two weeks. Without fail. More coffee, Gorse? I could sure use it. It's hot. I can see that. Thanks, Captain. Uh, this is better than Garrison, isn't it, Sergeant? Oh, it sure is. Night's full of stars. We had a good dinner of pork and chickpeas. Coffee's hot. There's plenty of it. Got a big fire going here, lots of wood. There's nothing wrong with this, Captain. Except for one little thing, maybe. What's that, Sergeant? Oh, it's hardly worth mentioning. Go ahead, speak up. Well, from all the sign we've seen today, I'd guess we're smack in the middle of about four Cheyenne war parties. No, I... Uh... Right, Sergeant. Of course, I don't know for sure, but with this bonfire we got going, I got a sneaky idea them engines just might catch on to our being here sooner or later. They might. Sorry you came along, Sergeant. I volunteered. Interesting mission, you say? Yeah. I also said we we might get killed, didn't I? You didn't say how. I don't know how, Sergeant. I bet I could tell you. Not interested. If we get killed, this mission will be a failure. Yeah, I'll say I hadn't thought of that. Now, that'd be a doggone shame, wouldn't it, Captain? It would. I can just see all them generals back in Washington sitting around a big, shiny table saying, that darn fool captain, that darn fool sergeant couldn't accomplish a simple little old mission. What's the cavalry coming to? That's what they're saying. <laughs> uh, throw some wood on the fire, Gorse. You're closest. Sure. Captain Quince? Yeah. They're here. All around us. Step back to the fire. Real slow. They can see anything at all. They, they can see we ain't armed. They wouldn't show themselves this close if they didn't know that. They're coming in, Captain. Stand steady, Sergeant. No sudden movements. It's sure some fine way for the cavalry to go engine hunting. We found them, didn't we? What happens now? That's not entirely us, Sergeant. Easy now. Sure. Zila ho di na ye. Di alo zilo. Di ish la ye nya. Di aise uva liu onzo. What's he saying? He says he'll take us to Big Wolf, all right. He says the chief wouldn't want to miss the torture before they kill us. You, uh, you wait 
go. Who could do any sleeping tied up like this? It'll be dawn soon. I just ain't looking forward to it today, Kip. At least we'll get out of the cheap. You know, this is the first time I was ever inside one. I ain't missed a thing. Mm, a TP can be pretty nice when you got a fire going and a buffalo robe to wrap up in. Yes, yeah, some antelope steak for breakfast, a jug of spring water, maybe a woman to do all the work. Well, you're spoiled, Gorse. Rotten spoiled. Well, it ain't the frontier life, did it, Captain? I can tell you that. You never should have left home. Oh, it's nice, old. He says they're ready for us, Sergeant. Oh, oh, he was in the other. What was that? Big Wolf hasn't returned. They've decided not to wait for him. But, Captain... He was our only chance I could have talked to Big Wolf. Not these other warriors, not even worth trying. It's like honey. Yeah, he's going to cut us loose. Why not? With a half hundred braves out there, we ain't going no place. You can tie a man up awful tight. I ain't even sure I can walk. I'll Let's go, Sergeant. Sure. Sergeant. What is it? Big Wolf. He's back. Thank heaven for that. Well, it's a chance, at least. There he is. Say, he looks like a chief, don't he? Yeah, he does. Captain Quince. Hello, Big Wolf. My people are ready for your death. I know. We allowed ourselves to be captured, Big Wolf. This I do not understand. I wanted to see you. I wanted to bring you something. White soldier has brought shame and dishonor to my people and to me. You're speaking of your son's grave. White soldier come at night... Left my body on ground. Yes. And he stole it from your son's grave. The totem of my clan. The white soldier did this to dishonor you, Big Wolf. Cheyenne, recover honor in war by killing you. Let me say something first, Big Wolf. Neither of us did this thing. It was a soldier who was weak and foolish and bad. This soldier has dishonored me as you. We do not want war with your people. Who is... So His name is Suthi. Give him to me. No, I can't do that. Then you must die. You have already killed eight soldiers, Big Wolf. Soon many soldiers will come. More soldiers than you have braves. Give me Suthi. You can punish him. He must be punished. He must die. Big Wolf, when you wake in the morning and step outside your lodge, see. Tell me. I see the sun, the land, morning shadows, bright mountains. And if you could not see all this, it would not be good. The soldier, Suthi, has already been punished, Big Wolf. I do. It is not enough. No, not by me. By your warriors in the fight. He is blind, Big Wolf. Blind? Blind the rest of his life. His punishment will never stop. You are brave men to come here with the totem. There must be no war between our people. It's done. Seven of my warriors died in fight. It is enough. We ride back in peace? Yes. And we've won, Big Wolf. We've both won. is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quinn, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for, for by John Meston, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. 
Musical supervision by Ido Marino. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, Jack Howard Culver, and Vivi Janis. Company, tension! Dismiss! Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. The time to fight Harpies is now, before another victim is hurt. Obviously, heart researchers may not find the cures to all heart ailments the moment you contribute to the heart fund. But the sooner you do your part, the closer come to answering the mysteries of the heart. Send your contributions to Heart, care of your local postmaster. That's Heart, H-E-A-R-T, Heart, care of your local postmaster.